In this video, we will be covering the steps of the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is a process that takes an oxaloacetate molecule and transforms it into citrate by adding acetyl-CoA. The process then takes citrate through many forms until it becomes oxaloacetate again, ready for another acetyl-CoA. Before we start with the cycle, we should talk about where the starting molecules come from. As we have briefly covered before, the product of glycolysis, pyruvate, has three options to take, and the presence of oxygen in the cell will tell us where it will go. If there is no oxygen present, the two pyruvate molecules will become lactic acid molecules. When oxygen is present, they will be turned into acetyl-CoA with a byproduct of carbon dioxide. Finally, if there is a need for more oxaloacetate, then pyruvate will be changed into that. Remember that the Krebs cycle starts and ends with an oxaloacetate, so the need for making more is limited and mostly dependent on how fast the molecule naturally breaks down, how much oxygen is present, and how much the energy demands are within that cell. So here's the first step within the cycle. Acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate come together to form citrate. The enzymes for this and every other step will be covered in another video. The next step is changing citrate to isocitrate. Because there are no energy products, the only important part is the enzyme, which we will cover in another video. The step after that is the transformation of isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate, and this process shows the conversion of NAD into NADH and H+. Notice that there is another byproduct of carbon dioxide. This is only within our diagram to denote that this step requires oxygen to be carried out. The next step is converting alpha-ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA. This process also produces the same exact products as the previous step, including the byproduct of carbon dioxide. The next step is the conversion from succinyl-CoA to succinate. This process adds a phosphate to GDP, making it GTP. That phosphate is immediately transferred to an ADP molecule, making it ATP. So in summary, this process produces one ATP per cycle. The next step is the conversion from succinate to fumarate. This process converts an FAD molecule into FADH2. Note that this process does not require oxygen and therefore does not have a byproduct of carbon dioxide. The next step is the conversion from fumarate to malate. This process does not create any energy, so we are skipping this step for another video. The last step is converting malate to oxaloacetate. This step also makes NADH and H+. However, it does not need oxygen to make this like the other two conversions of NAD. So that sums up all of the energy production of the Krebs cycle. Remember that this cycle happens twice for every glucose molecule or glycogen molecule because two pyruvate were created and were converted into two acetyl-CoA molecules. Therefore, the total products of one glucose molecule from the Krebs cycle is 6 NADH and H+, 2 FADH2, and 2 ATP. This is what you need to know for the class. You will also need to know where on this diagram each reaction occurs and be able to point them out. 